I'm Lauren Hirschap, inventor of the Brunton Axis Transit. This short orientation video is to get you more familiar with new and important features of the Brunton Axis. Watching this before you watch our instructional videos will help clarify the terminology we use for various measurements. First of all, it's called the axis because of its novel dual axis hinge. The major axis goes through the main hinge and siding tube and allows the lid to rotate 360 degrees around the compass face. The major axis is primarily used for measuring strike and dip or other angles that can be measured with the hinge dial. The minor axis is perpendicular to the major axis and allows the lid to rotate 360 degrees in a different plane. The minor axis is important for measuring trend and plunge, as well as vertical angles. In our instruction manual and videos, we refer to the standard configuration of the lid, which is when it has been rotated 270 degrees around the major axis to its stopping point. When you rotate the lid 180 degrees around its minor axis, it is then what we refer to as the alternate configuration. Here you can continue this rotation all the way around to the compass base, which completes the 360 degrees. So to review, here's the major axis, here's the minor axis, standard lid configuration, and alternate lid configuration. Clear? The next thing to note on the axis is that compass north is oriented parallel to the main hinge. This sets the axis apart from other transits where compass north points away from the hinge. And this is what makes the axis the only transit that can make simultaneous measurements of strike and dip, trend and plunge, bearing and vertical angle. By now perhaps you're wondering where the mirror and siding arm are. The axis doesn't need them. Due to the unique hollow siding tube through the hinge, and the orientation of compass north, directional bearings can be sighted through the hinge without the need for a siding arm or mirror. You'll have to find another way to shave or put your contacts in in the field. There are some additional dials and protractors on the axis to point out. The dials on each end of the hinge are for measuring dip angle and other angular features such as conjugate fractures, rake, or interlimb angle of a fold. Any time the lid is in standard configuration like this, read the hinge dial where it meets the top of the dip indicator. And when the lid is in alternate configuration, read where the hinge dial meets the bottom of the dip indicator. The protractor lid is for measuring plunge or vertical angle as the lid is rotated around its minor axis. Whenever this function is in use, it's important that the lid is in its 90 degree configuration, flush against the edge of the compass face. Plunge or vertical angle is then read wherever the top of the compass face meets the lid protractor. If the lid is in inverted position for measuring overhanging lineations, Plunge or vertical angle is read where the bottom of the compass face meets the protractor. Like other Brunton transits, the graduated compass circle is available in azimuth or quadrant formats and is adjustable from, for magnetic declination. To adjust for declination on the axis, first loosen the locking screw on the compass base with one full rotation. Any more and you might lose it. Then adjust the main black declination screw on the side to rotate the graduated circle counterclockwise for west declinations or clockwise for east declinations. Then remember to reset the locking screw on the compass base. The needle button is similar in function to that of the Brunton Geo. The magnetic needle is normally locked, but when you press the needle button, it allows the needle to rotate and reset itself. When you release the needle button, the compass needle locks into place. This new rare earth magnet needle 
is quickly dampened and is quite accurate even when the compass face is slightly off level. A recommended method for accurate bearings is to slowly press and release the needle button three times with each new measurement. That's sufficient to get it to lock into place for an accurate new reading. If you don't like this default needle setting, it can be disengaged using the adjuster on the compass base. Within the compass base itself, the inner circle is for clinometer readings. On the axis, the clinometer needle is gravity driven and lockable with the needle button. The clinometer circle goes all the way around for maximum versatility. And note that zero or horizontal is in this orientation and vertical or 90 are in these orientations. Please refer to the instruction manual provided with each axis and also online for more detailed descriptions and diagrams of axis features. And now we're ready to move on to some instructional videos.